Hello and welcome everyone. This is March 31st, 2023's quarterly roundtable number one from the Active Inference Institute. Welcome to the Active Inference Institute. We're a participatory online institute that is communicating, learning, and practicing applied active inference. You can find us at the links on this slide. This is a recorded and an archived live stream, so please provide us feedback so we can improve our work. All backgrounds and perspectives are welcome, and we'll be following video etiquette for live streams. Today, we're going to be checking in with our regular quarterly roundtable series. We're going to first provide some updates from the Institute scale. Then we'll talk about ongoing education and research projects before concluding with some thoughts on the Institute's paths in the coming year. So first, would the two of you like to introduce yourself? I'm Daniel. I'm a researcher in California and also the president of the Institute. Alex? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm a vice president of the Institute and also an um, educator in systems thinking. Blue, please go ahead. Hi, I'm Blue Knight. I'm an independent research consultant in New Mexico and the secretary for the Active Inference Institute. Back to you, Daniel. Awesome. Well, let's begin with some views on the Institute at the organizational scale. First, just as a summary overview, put us off to the side. We engage with our niche and provide services to it on multiple fronts. Here, who we are and what we are is reflected visually. At the Institute scale, we have several groups, including the ones that we'll be describing in the coming slides, the board of directors, the officers, and the scientific advisory board. We have two organizational units, somewhat like departments. These organizational units help support a wide range of projects related to education and research. Any general comments that you'd like to add? Yeah, let me add uh, here that, uh, yes, we are using, it's kind of simple schema, uh, but it actually uh, represents our uh, vision to have this uh, hierarchical structure explicit and to uh, represent in our attempts uh, to align with the active, active inference approach or organizational side of our activities. So for here we have like connections to the niche and uh, different scales of institution in general units, projects. So we are like having attention on keeping a structure alive and see how it's, which affordances it's provide us to development. As we undergo morphological development. And just to give a bit more information on the governance, the board of directors serves to implement institute scale, formal strategy and governance. They specified and provide oversight for the officers who are closer to the day-to-day -day operations at the Institute. And the board of directors applies active inference at the organizational scale. In contrast and in complement, the scientific advisory board assists with a wide range of tasks to reflect their diverse backgrounds and approaches. So let's talk a little bit more about the BOD and the SAB. First, as to the board of directors, our 2022 to 2023 board of directors are listed here. And we've recently confirmed three of us here on this stream as the officers again close to the day-to-day -day operations and who one is speaking with most likely when they email the Institute. Currently, we are working towards our nonprofit tax exemption status, 501c3 status for our nonprofit, and we continue to highlight Bolt's dimensions 
business, operational, legal, technical, and social. Anything else that either of you would like to add about our formal organizational structure? Uh, let me possibly add here that um, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> on the process of development, it was like uh, needed uh, legally activities to have uh, all these people in uh, all these roles uh, for the legal structure of institute and uh, that's great that's, uh, so great people we have on board and uh, like from from the side as i see it uh, even having the like a team of this size the process and uh, structure is uh, became more complex and all such changes uh, took uh, more time to restructuring and uh, like for first quarter we started this process like uh, last year and even first quarter i will need it to finalize these activities but it's great that we are here now having people in our roles and having accordance uh, to legal requirements and now we can make next steps possibly we took we will take again a lot of time but it's kind of new new form and uh, the speed of such uh, changes for institute scale is takes more time thank you it was definitely a memorable moment when during a scientific advisory board meeting one member suggested that this was stretching the upper limit of how complex and complicated our organization should be at our stage and another contrasted that it was actually the minimal level of complexity required to pursue certain legal statuses and so and another work so we're kind of straddling that line riding forward We have the second cohort of our scientific advisory board in full swing already most have joined meetings or engaged in other activities we have a healthy number of returning advisory board members and some great new advisory board members so thank you all for your work in the scientific advisory board and we're looking forward to bringing forth your engagement in the coming year in many many ways Anything either of you would like to add here? Uh, maybe to mention about uh, kind of diversity in terms of uh, people from different domains and it's growing in a number of participants. Uh, uh, maybe it even looks like uh, much more people than needed, but uh, having opportunity to discuss uh, uh, relevant uh, questions for research different research fields and uh, to have different insights it's uh, totally valuable for us and uh, provide us opportunities to make right steps in needed directions related to research side mostly for sure thank you there are many ways to engage with the Institute. There's a lot of asynchronously available materials like the recordings of the live streams and other productions and the transcripts and so on, things we'll discuss more about. And also for those who want to get more involved, be active in for ants, there are multiple opportunities for action. In the volunteer program, by going to our website and under education, finding volunteer, you can support your engagement with one or as many projects and activities as you'd like. By registering as a volunteer, we'll keep you in the loop about specific affordances for your participation. For example, registration opening for an upcoming learning group or some cool new update with a given project. And for those who are looking for even more structure, we offer an internship program we have currently about 10 active interns from around the world who are engaging with different research and education affordances at the Institute in their own ways, reflective of their own situations. 
the interns engage in some element of learning and education, usually with textbook groups or other courses, some element of project-based learning, where they are going to be and are contributing to different projects, making translations in the ontology or developing some other kind of work. And the internship has a more active mentorship and peer facilitation aspect for whatever your educational and research journeys are. Any comments on that? We hope that this becomes a very important vector for people who want to catalyze their active inference journey. We basically cannot imagine a better way for someone who wants to dedicate one hour per week, 10 hours per week, 30 hours per week, whatever it may be, we can find a kind of relationship that's going to be mutually beneficial. Yeah, I think it was uh, quite a smart mutation of our activities and having that format and having that uh, actually active people uh, in game, it's uh, the most valuable thing. Uh, and uh, having organizing it as uh, flexible as possible around uh, specific people specific situation and uh, learning paths um, we can keep it and develop and hopefully it will bring more people who are interested in active inference to some actual activities and learning path in that direction great with respect to what they call social media, we have our main platforms and numbers noted here. So it's been great to see continued growth on these fronts. As to the big picture on our activities, the above link provides a always updated reference point for the activities that are ongoing and the times of their meeting and also links to those documents if you want to learn more and we're going to go through many of them today but first just the thirty thousand foot view these are some of the active activities at the institute all of which are participatory so if you're curious just wanting to know more or see a way for you to contribute or maybe even want to spin up your own project where you'd be a facilitator we can talk more about it. As for learning groups, we continue to have par at all textbook groups, which will be discussed later. We have been active with Sanjeev Namjoshi in the Fundamentals of Active Inference group, working on Sanjeev's book in progress and providing feedback, which will hopefully be surfaced more and throughout the year. And also to be addressed later, we're working on category theory as a learning group. We organize and produce live streams and with the transcripts of those live streams, publish an archive and do other things with the language processing. In Active Block Friends project, we're developing implementations for active inference at this point, largely using approaches and code that are scattered elsewhere, bringing them together and help making it more coherent for people who want to engage in active inference modeling. So people who want to engage with the actual code and see how it works in a script rather than from a mathematical or from a philosophical approach, this is a great project to add into your toolkit. In robotics and embodied, JF Cloutier continues to present us with progress on his work in symbolic active inference and engage participants in this very exciting area. In the active inference ontology, we continue to develop translations, definitions, examples, and counterexamples, and methodologies involving the active inference ontology and how it's used. And we also have several open hours per week in our Discord where we have wide ranging conversations. These are really great entry points if someone doesn't even find a specific project that they're curious about, but they just want to learn more in general. Joining any open discussion hour is a great option because we can field that conversation then. And just to show a few of our seed 
or inactive projects. Starting in May, we'll have a physics as information processing course by Chris Fields. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Podcast continues to exist, albeit a little bit on the back burner. In software, we have several software ideas and projects that have been sketched to some extent, but are not engaging regularly to meet, as well as um, the development of frameworks for cognitive agent modeling and course development. So we have a good portfolio for those who choose to engage with one or more activity. And there are always burners that are on low or off. Let's go into the educational project updates in the EduActive yeah, yeah. organizational yeah, let me add Please. here. Yeah, related to education, uh, as we can see now, uh, educational activities uh, became more and more important and active and we have different formats uh, and uh, even on our planning some uh, creation and uh, or organization of uh, education different educational courses and it's also a result uh, result of transformation to institute uh, when we consider this uh, educational function as a specific uh, for such type of organizations and for now, we kind of, I believe, we see the results of such implementing such, such strategies, starting to think about education uh, and starting to make actions to have education in place for in, in institute. Thank you. Currently, as one of our primary educational avenues, we are continuing with our textbook group centered around the Parr, Pizzullo, and Friston 2022 textbook. So the first cohort has been completed last year, and those who have completed the cohort are encouraged to join future cohorts and be participants again or be learning assistants. The second cohort, which began in the second half of last year, is about two weeks from finishing the whole textbook. And the third cohort, which begun in 2023, is now closing in on finishing the first half of the textbook book. Uh, cohort four will begin with the beginning of the textbook in the coming months. So check out on our website, the textbook group page, if you want to register for the fourth cohort or if you have any other questions. Just to summarize, it's a really exciting and inclusive experience to be in the textbook group. People have all backgrounds, different familiarities and angles of approach to active inference. Everybody has different familiarity with the active inference ontology and with equations, math, statistics, philosophy, all these threads that come together in the textbook group. We have fun and we work together to improve our shared documents so that we can have a wide variety of tools and augmented learning approaches that we wouldn't be able to have alone. So if you're planning to work on this textbook at all, or if you're curious about it, there couldn't be a better way to engage with it. Um, moving to another educational project with a small group of participants, we are working on a category theory group. This group is an extended dot zero preparation session for this draft uh, dissertation thesis by Toby St. Clair Smith, Mathematical Foundations for a Compositional Account of the Bayesian Brain. And in this group, where we have many different backgrounds and familiarity with category theory, ranging from none to some, we are preparing the dot zero background and context materials for upcoming live streams with Toby in the middle of 2023, where we're going to be discussing this incredible work, which brings together in some novel ways, the compositionality of category theory with the otherwise non compositional Bayesian brain active inference type approaches. We're going to see how it all works together in the coming years. It's not the end with this dissertation. It's really just the beginning. 
And so it's been quite exciting to develop educational materials as a small group, as well as some individuals within the group developing personal materials like blogs and syllabus to help learn at the intersection of active inference in category theory. And everyone's welcome to get involved with this group, just as with all the others. And this group is an example or a template of how we operate deliverable oriented learning groups at the Institute. Um, doesn't mean every person is going to have homework. It's just the way that, for example, shown here on the right, we structure meetings and set a pace where we know we could spend five years working on one page because that's what the PhD is like, but we also move quickly enough to get things done in reasonable timeframes and have a shared niche, many pages not shown, where we have notes, questions, discourse, and so on. Any thing, Blue or Alex, on category theory? Maybe not uh, only here, but um, in general for education and courses, I think that we called the value added services for education, for course organization. It's kind of unique uh, because it's evolving and but it's evolving around some structure uh, for onto ontological work and uh, having it in place uh, like a ground we can build a lot of uh, really uh, valuable valuable services uh, to provide additional information links connections between terms uh, ideas questions and so on and I believe the development and the direction and trying to apply the same approach for different educational activity uh, will bring interesting results for everyone. Awesome. Agreed. We have recently been very happy to announce that in May 2023, we will be hosting a course taught by Chris Fields, Physics as Information Processing. You can find out more in the education section on our site. It is going to consist of six lectures live streamed by Chris Fields and six live streamed, but also participatory discussion sessions with Andre Aguirre. So you'll be able to access all materials, preparatory readings, associated topics, recordings of live streams and so on, on this course coda and look forward to learning more about this. It's going to be a great course. Anything you want to add? I'm really looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> that's, that's all. I'm super excited. I think it's really like awesome of Chris to uh, put this forward um, and let us host this wonderful class. Um, and yeah, we're going to be having discussions sessions that are um, hopefully transcribed through the Active Inference Journal. So getting in touch um, and participating in these sessions is a good chance to interact with the journal in that kind of way. That's the only addition I would make maybe. Yes, all the lectures and discussions and asynchronously submitted questions and answers will be compiled and published and citable. So this we expect to be a multi hundred page functionally landmark publication. If you're interested in this area and you're in this moment in time, do what you can. Alex? Uh, I just want to add that it's great that we see that growing connections uh, between quantum uh, theory and quantum information theory to active inference. And uh, it's uh, starting to grow and uh, it's bring us uh, more and more first principles into this framework basements. So it's very cool. Agreed. We've had a very exciting 2023 for live streams. First, just the ask with your contributions and assistance, we can co-create a special and engaging sequence of live streams for the rest of the year. So everybody listening is welcome to join. You're always welcome to comment and continue the discussion. 
Also, you can join live streams while they occur. You can self-nominate. If you'd like to give a presentation or have your paper discussed, please let us know. Or if you have a recommendation or even a warm introduction, that could go a long way. If you'd like to bring some materials and perspectives really to the forefront, you can collaborate on a dot zero background and context video and help lock in the ways that you might want to share background for a topic to preempt uncertainty or do any other kind of service in the epistemic niche. And we meet weekly, of course, to discuss these issues. Just quickly to look at some of the streams that we've had in this year, 2023 so far. Um, we had guest streams from Adam Peace, Alireza Modirishanji, Avil Gwenenkarlu, Jordan Hall and Matthew Pekowski, Benjamin Fallendays, Baba Brinkman, Max Berg, Shu Ji, and Vanya Visa. So these guest streams ran the gamut from consciousness to clinical psychiatric modeling with active inference, improvisation in rap, ecological psychology, civics and governance, physics of creation, technical details on surprise definitions, integration of large language models with neurosymbolic approaches and formal ontologies. And later today, there will be an org stream with Stray Jane on plural publics. Those are the guest streams, and we've also had a great set of other streams. For paper-oriented live streams, we've had two series. In live stream 52, Geometric Methods for Sampling, Optimization, Inference, and Adaptive Agents, Lance DaCosta joined for both discussions and has incredible insights into that group's paper that brings together the topics in the title. And in the recently concluded 53 sequence on a pair of papers, Snakes and Ladders in Paleoanthropology and To Copy or Not to Copy, in both of these live streams, we had the authors Michael Walker, Hector Manrique, and Carl Friston joining, and both were very special and illustrative discussions. We've had two model streams, one on PyMDP, a Python package for generative models of the active inference flavor. That was with Connor Hines and Carl Friston. And Tom Ringstrom joined for a presentation, Reward is Not Necessary. We also enjoyed a sequence of book streams, and so I'll pass to Blue to say a little bit more about those book streams. Sure, so we have been um, going through this text and discussing the material presented in the first three parts of the book. And we're not gonna do the um, interviews at the end section of the book, just because it's kind of beyond the scope of what we wanted to cover in the book streams. But we have been going through week by week, chapter by chapter, um, examining this material, which is really the act, uh, application of active inference to governance, uh, especially like with our own governance of the Institute, like being forming officers and a board of directors and how should we factor in the um, concept of active inference into our governance policies. So this was a very interesting uh group of readings and discussions that we've had over the last few weeks. And we are going to have a final discussion coming up in like the next three-ish weeks. Hopefully the author will join us again to discuss the material, but also so this discussion, we would really love to have the outside perspectives for people that have been engaging this with this material, either through watching the live streams or the book streams or um, have read the text. So if you want to get in on these discussions of active inference and its application and governance, please get in touch because we would really like to have some different perspectives in our final discussion session. Thank you, Blue, and also to Tyler for this great series. And to kind of conclude on the live streams and bring in the journal, which is actually what happens in the work itself, every live stream that we do, which can be found at the CODA link shown here and posted in every video description, the slides are available where possible, but also we are developing a utilities pipeline that automatically downloads the audio from YouTube, uses 
artificial intelligence to do speech to text, outputs a markdown, and then uses rendering approaches to render that markdown. And so there's a Git folder where you'll find all the transcripts and therefore be able to do some incredible natural language analysis, ontology-driven analysis of this corpus of several hundred videos and growing. And we look forward to continuing to improve that pipeline as speech and text processing advance quite rapidly. And techniques and methods that were outside of our capacity even weeks to months ago, day by day, draw nearer. So if you'd like a really open decentralized science, DSI, open science project or corpus, there are many, many ways in the journal that we can improve the rigor, accessibility, and applicability of our live streams, and therefore continue to add value and meaning, even for live streams from the past. Anything to add? All right. So that's uh, the... Maybe yes. Maybe mm -hmm. yes. Uh... I want to support that uh, it's uh, give us a lot of opportunities to reuse in some way this uh, transcription from our side as, as an institute, uh, building some possible uh, language tools uh, or chats uh, to communicate about active inference and uh, uh, a lot and a lot of opportunities will arise like next months and years uh, which de is development of uh, uh, language models uh, in general as a domain so we will we have like a main piece of for it a text and how we will use uh, uh, this text uh, to how we can what services we can create, which cases we can support. It will be huge and hopefully people from community of Institute could share some ideas how we can improve here and possibly participate in this project, considering it as a technical heavy and like uh, uh, on the frontier of current uh, language processing tools. Thank you, Alex. Indeed, to watch all the videos may not be possible given limited time. It may not be preferable, but to engage in discourse and synthesize summaries with a rich and articulate corpus where speakers are also known and we have connections with the speakers and the co-authors and all this other kind of information, there are just going to be many, many opportunities. So hopefully in a future roundtable, we can revisit this, go into a little bit more depth and show the status of our pipeline such that we can fulfill that vision of having a live stream and then rapidly within hours after the live stream have gotten the audio rendered into Markdown rendered the markdown into a variety of accessibility um, oriented formats. It's going to be amazing. In our last section, we'll talk about some research updates. And so if you're watching live, please feel free to write a comment or share a favorite memory or do so in the comments after the video. But we'll go through just a few research updates. And then if anyone has questions in the live chat, address those. And then that'll be it for the roundtable. So just a research overview. We have a handful of ongoing research projects. In the Active Inference Ontology, we are developing the Active Inference Ontology. In Active Blockference, we are developing a package that integrates and facilitates approaches for computational modeling with Active Inference. And in Robotics and Embodied, JF Cloutier is leading the way on some Lego robots that do symbolic Active Inference. We have several seed research projects for those who'd like to, for example, explore a graphical interface for active inference or look at the broader landscape of cognitive agent modeling approaches. And lastly, although most ramified in their manifestations are the individual research projects. 
So not all the work that people are engaged in is necessarily using the documents and the deliverables of the Institute. We also really honor and want to support the individual research journeys that many are on inside or outside of formal academic structures. And so with our interns and others who aren't even interns, there are so many exciting projects that everyone is engaged in. They share during the open hours, they post updates in our Discord, and um, we do a lot when we work on our own projects and group projects. Just to give two examples to highlight, um, one of our interns, Shohei Wakayama, has uh, updated his paper on active inference for autonomous decision making with contextual multi arm bandits. And this has recently been accepted to a uh, uh, relevant conference. So, congratulations, Shohei. Also, uh, a variational synthesis of evolutionary and developmental dynamics a paper with both I and Blue as co-authors and some other names that people may find familiar from the cast of live stream characters. So just a few um, that we wanted to draw together, but a little bit more generally, if you have any work that you'd like to share, please let us know and we'll make sure to highlight it in future newsletters and roundtables. It would be awesome to have that kind of an update system so that we could highlight like a collage or a mosaic of all the works that people are doing around the Institute. And um, it's just been great to see. There are so many others that it was just hard to pick exactly what ones in our limited time to put here, but we saw many great developments over the past month, personally and organizationally. So this is just a few of what the research side looks like. And in our last minutes, we can talk about whatever you fellows would like in terms of next steps or reflections. Perhaps Alex first. Okay. Yeah, I think we will continue uh, structuring and improving activities related to education supporting uh, interests from community uh, and interest for people who uh, who can produce educational materials we will try to support in in all direction and provide the affordances uh, on organizational side and possibly on communications and for research uh, i believe we we will work on some kind of uh, research strategy with our scientific advisory board uh, because for now we have uh, like a, a few core research projects ongoing and uh, that's great basics uh, we support uh, research of people who, who contacted us but uh, having in place uh, like a long-term strategy in research directions uh, will be a great achievement if we can present something related on next round table related to it so that's all from my side thank you alex blue so for me, I have kind of um, pulled back. If you're not seeing me around discussing active inference, it's because I have decided to prioritize building institutional infrastructure and institutional capacity for the Active Inference Institute. So my focus now is on getting grants for the Institute and pushing on the 501c3 status, 5013c3, C3, whatever it is, the nonprofit status. So um, my, that's my biggest priority and focus, and I'm looking forward to kind of getting over a few of those hurdles and getting back into um, the material because I really do miss it and I really miss like hanging out with everyone, but I can't, I have to like focus my attention and effort uh, so that I can continue to focus on active inference for many years to come. Awesome, great notes there. Indeed. The organizational work is applying active inference. It looks a little different than reading a paper, joining a textbook group. It's 
research this quarter has been um, very rewarding, very developmental from what we can see. It would be extremely helpful and requested slash appreciated for those who engaged a lot all the way on down through a little or not at all to provide their feedback directly or in the comments to this video or however they see fit to let us know about how we can improve. You are our niche and we act in first serve for you. Having that kind of closure with even your acknowledgments means a lot and it does help shape what we can and do offer. On research, Alex, I also look forward to uh, what you suggested about developing more of a research program so that we can see where different things fit. And we're kind of engineering that from the bottom up, but increasingly being able to take a top-down view. And about education, every textbook group, every dot zero, every course is rapidly becoming easier and easier to organize as we develop templates expertise and so on and right now the rate limiting step in those who want to create or engage with educational material is the material itself and so that feels like a really good step in our active inference corner of the world prior there was a lack of content not saying that there's a sufficient amount now but hardly any casual conversations existed and hardly any technical discussions existed for especially this cutting edge active inference developments that truly on a month by month basis provide at least new views on older discussions and so being able to develop that material and increasingly support others who want to teach their own courses like chris fields as well as others that will be announced and upcoming in the rest of the year so those who want to teach or have a hosted course get in touch those who want to learn more we hope you're doing so and again we appreciate all of the engagements and feedback it's how we actually make it happen together any closing thoughts Just to express gratitude for everybody engaging with the Institute, keeping us alive, um, and for you guys, because you're awesome to work with and hang out with. It's been fun. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, officers. Thank you, participants. <laughs> Farewell. Bye-bye.